let's learn about data science scenario based question so whenever you are preparing for data science and when you are going back to your data science interview questions there are two different stages the very first stage going to be they start asking questions from your project and if you are going to the next levels maybe like if you are going to your cto level or manager level they start giving you certain scenarios let's try to start with the very first one uh, the very first scenario based question so now here you are able to see this so you have developed a predictive model that meets technical expectation but doesn't align with a stakeholder's desired accuracy level so now whatever the predictive model you have developed or a machine learning model you have developed it is meeting the technical expectation whatever they thought of but it is not meeting their desired accuracy level so this is one of the common problems so when we are working on a real time so you will be having a situations like you have developed a mind blowing model you are very technically strong but you lack or your data set or your model may not give a very good amount of accuracy what your stakeholders are expecting so how would you handle that communication with the stakeholders so in order to explain it now uh, i'm not explaining something like uh, the communication and all that or how to explain this answer verbally but i'm just giving you the points while you're preparing now if you're getting this kind of questions try to explain the reasons for the current accuracy so why you are getting whatever the accuracy even you are getting right now so why you are getting that particular accuracy and even try to include so every time the accuracy of a model is purely dependent on three fundamentals if you are able to look into it the accuracy of any ml model is purely dependent on three fundamentals which we are aware of now if your model accuracy is not coming the reason can be because of the data the second problem that problem can be because of the kind of ml algorithm or the kind of dl algorithm you selected and the third one going to be the kind of features you selected so now if you are able to select the right amount of features also you are able to get it and another one so within your data i can call it as sample now within this sample you have you may collect a wrong sample or it may contain certain outliers so because of that your model performance may not work that's the reason while you are trying to explain to your uh, stakeholders you try to include the reasons behind why even you are getting the current accuracy and include the data whatever the data you collected and even try to include the limitations whatever the machine learning model you selected and what are the limitations of that particular model so in case of there are limitations then the client going to ask you why you selected this kind of model when you are having or when you know there are certain limitations so try to be careful with that particular point and then acknowledge stakeholder concerns so now when you are trying to go and when you are trying to explain it don't don't just be in a rush and don't try to explain uh, the uh, means like uh, whatever you thought of being like more technical try to understand what exactly they are expecting why they are expecting for example why they want accuracy there are two reasons now i'm planning to make an estimation about the future forecast then the accuracy need to be very good if the accuracy is not good even though we are trying to make an estimation about the business we cannot get any kind of business profit for a business people now the second one can be they are trying to automate the process with the help of machine learning now when you are trying to automate even if you are getting 50% accuracy still you can automate 50% but is that their criteria so you need to check with the stakeholders now whatever the concerns they are having so listen to their accuracy expectations and why they are looking for that particular accuracy expectation try to understand their requirement and based on that try to explain it so now in case if you are unable to that going to be a bit like uh, difficult in your real time so i think most of the real time people manage is with ease that's not a big problem and clarify trade offs or showing how accuracy impacts business outcomes so even clearly indicates for example if it is a basically an automation how this accuracy can help help the business so how this uh, uh, accuracy can impact the business automation so how much percentage of automation we are able to get it so by translating that clear communication of the numbers so don't just communicate accuracy as accuracy but whatever the accuracy you got what is the efficiency you are increasing or what is the demand you are able to uh, the losses you are able to reduce it or how much accuracy how much automation you are increasing if you are able to communicate the accuracy in lines of your business numbers the clients going to easily understand okay this is not a bad accuracy we are able to get a better profits comparatively without any ml model with ml model we are able to get a good numbers they are able to understand and again provide or give suggestion improvements like acquiring more data you try to explain hey 
my next goal going to be I'm trying to co collect more data or I'm trying to go with advanced models or I'm trying to go with refining the features. So I'm going with a better feature selection technique or I'm trying to select a better model. This is the kind of model I'm planning to go and I'm trying to implement. Now, as I said in the early minutes, now your accuracy is dependent only on three. The sample, or we can say data, or we can say rows. Second one, it depends upon the model, whether it is ML or DL. So within your ML or DL, we have stochastic model, or we can say probabilistic, deterministic, or discriminative and generative. So between those categories, we have it. And you try to, we are providing those suggestions. And then explore, Pilot test. Now, if the, for example, now before even you are going with this particular one, so now you said, hey, by going with this kind of accuracy, we are able to do this kind of business benefits. You already explained it. Then try to take that act model, try to deploy it to a real world, and try to pass a bit of existing uh, real world audience to that particular model. See how the model is behaving. We are calling it as a pilot test. So try to see how your model is behaving. So your client's going to understand okay, this guy is trying to take something uh, to the testing so they can understand it clearly based on the numbers. And schedule, again, like uh, once everything is done, if you are able to convince them, then you will be uh, constantly updating them how you are improving your model accuracy, what type of models you are doing. So you are trying to explain all this kind of area. So keep these points in the brain while you are explaining it in your scenario-based questions, what you will be doing. And the second one is like uh, you have built a complex machine learning model for uh, predicting loan approvals, the finance team wants to understand how the model makes decisions. So before deploying it. So now what exactly they are expecting from this kind of question is how you are trying to explain your model. So now when you are dealing with any, uh, it means like ML or data science work or AI work, now you are trying to have a connection with various non-IT department or we can say for example, loan approval, they're going to be managers who are dealing with loan approvals, banking people, especially they are not programmers, they're banking people. Now, how you, you are convincing the banking people. So how you are convincing machine learning is really better than a human. How a machine learning or AI is able to replace a person. So how exactly is it just working as a black box? So now majority of your bank people are having a concern. Is it a black box? What exactly meant by a black box is? Now you are trying to feed a data inside your black box. It is able to get the approvals or it is able to get the predictions. We are able to get the predictions, but how? The major concern is how exactly it is able to make the predictions. They don't want to know it's as a black box. See, it's an ML algorithm, it is predicting, but they need to know how we are able to believe the accuracy. Whatever the accuracy we are getting, how we can believe it. How we can believe this is a very good model. So that's what here we are giving. How would you explain the model predictions to a non-technical stakeholders, maybe like a managers or the banking people? So you need to explain about the feature importance. So now what exactly you need to do? So like while you're coding, you have selected decision tree. You are able to go and you can plot feature importance. If you're able to plot feature importance, you're able to get, if there are 30 or 40 parameters, you're able to get the most important features. You're able to communicate. So in order to build an ML model, my uh, in order to build this accuracy, these features are used by algorithm in order to actually, in order to, uh, means like in order to get the accuracy or in order to learn it, our algorithm has selected these features as the most important features. Then the business people going to cross check, for example, now, uh, I'm, I, I want to approve a loan. So in order to approve a loan, it is trying to approve a loan based on his uh, grocery bill. So now how much grocery bill he is making, so on monthly basis, or how much electric electricity bill he is paying on monthly basis, based on that, it is trying to approve a loan. But for example, that is also a parameter we collected. But if you're, if that is the most important parameter, your managers will say, man, how grocery bill and electricity bill going to be more valid to approve a loan. It feels it like it's like uh, uh, completely wrong. So every time the humans going to look into your ML models as something like if I am a human, if I'm trying to approve a loan on what basis? For example, it is trying to approve a loan based on the civil score. It is approving, approving the loan based on the previous uh, loan amounts they are having 
or it is approving the loan based on your salary or it is approving the loan based on the age it is approving the loan maybe based on the gender based on the designation based on the kind of company you are working based on whether you are a business person or you are a freelancer or whether you are a working guy like a government or a private job you are having so based on all this if your model is trying to say then this manager is going to feel convinced okay this is trying to take valid features and based on that it the, we are able to believe this model so we call by the help of feature importance we are able to say that and the next one don't just just plot it with a programming try to plot decision tree you can plot a decision tree you can show how it is working so they can understand okay this is how it is learning or this is how it is able to identify the rules and try to explain the theory behind decision tree if they are interested in a very easy understanding so they can grab it try to explain them what is traditional programming or a um, machine learning driven programming or the machine learning driven rules so they start understanding a name and terminology and try to demonstrate the feature importance in a visual representation you can plot them as a bar plot so you can showcase with plotly or seaborn plot them and they're going to understand okay this is how each parameter is important and they can understand it or you can use libraries like sharp and lime so with they are used for model interpretability that you can use sharp and lime how exactly each uh, for each row how the parameters are changed you can plot them with the sharp and lime so how the how exactly each parameter is impacting negatively to your ml model you can demonstrate them with sharp and lime so try to explain this uh, feature importance or um, plotting them uh, with the help of bar plots or try to use sharp and lime model interpret model interpretability metrics and even use the theory behind the algorithms so they can start understanding how it is trying to learn or how it is trying to understand it to the non technical audience that is the second question or we can say this is how another question which most popular question where uh, the recruiters going to ask and the third one your team needs a monthly sales forecast so your team needs a monthly sales forecast for the next year to help with planning the data includes seasonal variants and some missing values and how would you approach this forecasting problem so when you are having missing problem missing values how you are trying to fill them so we all know if there is a missing value you try to fill them with mean or we try to fill it with median or we try to fill it with more but by filling them you are fabricating the data in simple by treating those missing values you are fabricating it now you are trying to estimate a monthly sales of a particular company for example it can be uh, maybe it can be a grocery store or it can be electricity department so if the missing values if there are missing values if you are trying to make estimations with a fabricated data you're going to have a wrong estimation values or we are able to get a wrong forecasted values that is a limitation so now how you are treating the missing values by including the business into the consideration you want to explain them and apart from it you need to use your theory what does it mean by your theory is now when you are trying to build any uh, time series model we have this particular uh, means like time series concept or we can say uh, there is a mind map behind it so in simple if you are going with forecasting once you treated your missing values with the inclusion of your business plus your statistics plus programming now you are trying to you can use statistical approaches for a seasonal data like uh, a sarima models arima model these are different models which are available on forecasting moving average exponential smoothing arima sarima again you in order to check the stationarity we use at fuller test in order to choose between uh, auto regressive term and a moving average term you use acf plots and psef plots in order to make your data uh, stationary we are trying to do differencing first order second order differencing and the challenges of a time series data and we got machine learning techniques like in order to do mostly very rare people uses machine learning techniques they start using uh, our statistical approaches of forecasting or they start using deep learning techniques like fb profits rnns or we can say lstms gated recurrent units deep ar models so this kind of techniques and for each and every model we have a particular comparison why to use when to use try to explain them to your interviewer that going to help you uh means they understand okay in order to select an algorithm how careful he is trying to behave how what are the various consideration he is looking into it before he is trying to select one algorithm for a time series that decides your thought process and that explains to the interviewer clearly it communicates that okay this guy is having a lot of uh theory plus he is having that rationality he is having that analytical thinking is not just blindly uh going and implementing you are able to demonstrate that now try to use this kind of theory concepts 
and uh, the another one going to be how uh, you have a data set with hundreds of features some of which may be redundant or irrelevant how would you identify the most relevant features for your model so now we have when you are trying to do this is called more like a feature selection uh, techniques now in lines of our uh, ml we can identify the most important features with the eda so now you are trying to perform eda and where you can do univariate bivariate multivariate analysis and from that you are able to see as part of bivariate we have correlation if there is a continuous data if you want to check especially linear related parameters we can identify the features with the help of correlation in case no irrespective of the algorithm you are selecting you are able to identify the most important features like variance threshold fisher score chi square this kind of techniques we have we call it as filter method or with respect to a specific algorithm if i want to identify the most important features i can use a wrapper method like rfe recursive feature elaboration technique or sequential feature selection or exhaustive feature selection in this way we have various wrapper methods and uh, we have another one called as embedded methods i'm calling it as em embedded methods embedded methods are used in your ml so if you pass the entire data set to an algorithm like decision tree random forest gradient boosting it is able to give you the most important parameters we call them as embedded uh, models or embedded technique uh, embedded methods and uh, we got dimensionality reduction technique so now you have collected a huge amount of data where you have thousands of columns uh, your algorithm is unable to learn but you want that uh, eigen values and eigen vectors means you want the data points when you are applying the transformation like a linear transformation the vectors which are not changing its direction we call them as eigen vectors so you are trying to select uh, the eigen vectors and based on the eigen values the most important eigen vectors you are trying to select it and you are trying to build a machine learning model around it so there is a procedure you standardize the data after standardizing you calculate a covariance matrix there is a concept so we try to perform all that so uh, which we call it as dimensional reduction now you want all the thousand columns but we want only that linear data points which i need to include it i can go with dimensional reduction or again variance we are trying to check variance threshold which is a part of filter method and we are selecting the most important features or we are removing the redundant or irrelevant features based on the business importance so you are trying to get a knowledge transfer from your client or a stakeholder or we can say it like a domain expert or a subject matter expert and you are trying to understand the importance of those features and whichever the parameters feels irrelevant or redundant based on the business importance even you are trying to remove them now the very important metric for feature selection is business importance first you are understanding each and every feature based on a business importance and uh, as a combination your filter method is saying in order to estimate the loan civil is one of the wrong parameter but business importance wise civil is the important parameter then what we will be doing we may not remove them we may not listen to filter method we listen to business importance and we are trying to select civil as the most important parameter now we need to study the sme or we need to study the domain knowledge with the help of subject matter expert and based on that you are trying to select the most important feature so in order to do that process you can use any of this techniques i hope you got uh so i just covering this four questions i hope you got how to explain some of the or how to explain or how to plan your points for your scenario based questions on this four areas so we will be, as we are moving forward you will be, i will be covering more interview preparation questions so that you are able to grab it and you are able to understand them better i hope you got a clear understanding if you have even more different questions which you faced it in data science interviews you can post them in the comment section i can go through them i can collect it and i can make a video around it so that that going to help you for your interviews i hope you got a clear understanding of it if you like this content please do like subscribe and even please share comments on this youtube thank you so much